Hello my friends, I'm Sarah. Welcome to Grace in My Space. Today we are talking budget, kitchen design, and how they combine. Rhyme again. Now, if you haven't seen our before and after of this kitchen remodel, I'm gonna pop the video up here because it's a really amazing transformation that was much more than just a kitchen remodel. So one of the biggest questions that we have had on this entire renovation journey over the last nine, 10 months has been, what's your budget? And I just wanna cover that today. I wanna to dive in a little bit deeper and I want you to understand that my budget will never be yours. That is the biggest thing that I want you to take away from this video. Everything that you see that I've done in my home, if you were to replicate it in yours, it would cost you something different. I guarantee it, and we're gonna talk about why. First things first, if you want your kitchen to look super duper beautiful, go out and cut you some things from your yard. I, I don't know what this is. Maybe honeysuckle, maybe it's weed. I'm not really sure, but it's real pretty. So there is so very much that we can talk about when you're talking creating a new kitchen, whether you are going builder grade, whether you are going DIY, whether you are doing full on custom everything, the amount of variables that go into a kitchen remodel or even just an upgrade are astounding. This is one room in your home where you will be completely overwhelmed with the amount of decisions that you have to make. And so I hope that today's video is going to kind of put some of those things into perspective, give you a little bit of an overarching idea of some of the different things you might come across if you're planning a remodel and what it's gonna cost you. First things first, we gotta get some coffee. Settle in friends, it's gonna be a long one. But let's talk first about cabinetry. Cabinetry is by far the most visible portion of a kitchen remodel, and most of the time, the thing that most people want to upgrade. Maybe you wanna upgrade your kitchen cabinets because they're dated, maybe they are the wrong color, maybe they're falling apart, maybe they're in the wrong layout for what you would like. There are a lot of different reasons to upgrade a cabinet, and there are a lot of different ways that you can do it. So there's three basic options for upgrading your cabinetry. You can go big box stores, just go to Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, there are a lot of different places offer cabinetry. Buy your cabinets, install them, call it good. Option two is a semi-custom option where you can buy your cabinet base, the, the box essentially, and then you can customize it through companies that offer custom doors and drawer fronts. Great option. And then the third option, which is the most popular for what people want, but often the most expensive, is a fully custom option where you are building your cabinets to the specs of your kitchen layout. Now that's the easy part. That's the simple part. Figuring out what you would like to do based on budget mostly starts there. Then you get to decide what species, color. You gonna paint it, you gonna stain it. Are you gonna do a full overlay or an inset or a partial overlay cabinet door? Are you gonna customize the insides? Are you gonna do drawers on the bottoms instead of doors? Are you gonna panel your appliances? All of these things add cost, add design elements, and then you just need to decide what it's worth. Is it worth the extra cost to add this design element? Is it going to overall elevate the look of my kitchen or the functionality that I need and go from there? So let's break down a couple of those things. No matter if you are purchasing from a big box store, fully made cabinets, if you're doing semi or if you're doing fully custom made cabinets, you have an option of what you want them to look like. Most people focus on the style of doors. This is a shaker style door with a little bit of applied molding around the edges to elevate it a little bit and make it a little bit more traditional. But what you first need to decide is whether you want a partial overlay, full overlay, or inset cabinet design. And let me tell you what that means. All of those terms are just referring to how your drawer and door fronts relate to the cabinet frame. This is my cabinet frame. You can only see it right here because I have full overlay doors so that when they're closed, you can see none of the cabinet box. It's hidden 
full overlay. Then you also have partial overlay cabinets where you can see the face frame of the cabinet box. There is usually a little bit of a reveal and it is one of your most common cabinet styles. The third style is an inset style, which I had in my last kitchen, where the drawer front and your cabinet doors actually sit inside flush with the cabinet frame. Now, partial overlay doors are most affordable, full overlay is the middle ground, and then inset cabinets are the most expensive, typically. And when I say typically, that means that there are so many other elements that go into your cost, your geographic location, how your cabinetry is gonna be installed in your kitchen, who's installing it for you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Who's building them? There are endless amounts of variables that are gonna impact what you actually pay. That's why quotes are your very, very, very best friend. Now, before we move on to more design elements, I wanna talk about some decorating things because whether you have a full-on custom kitchen, whether you built it yourself, and everything in between, you can decorate a beautiful styled kitchen with very few accents and make it look as homey or as minimalistic or as functional as you want. And I love, love, love that part of kitchen design because you can take a basic bare bones kitchen and one person can make it look traditional and cozy and homey and really functional. And the other person can make it look extremely high end, minimalistic, and you know, like we're only serving cocktails here in this kitchen and everything in between, depending on how you decorate it. Now here's an example. This is a very minimalistic look along the island. It looks like I don't have any bar stools, doesn't it? But I do. They just don't have backs. And these babies are out of here. I want to elevate this kitchen design. Everything else is very polished and traditional, and these are not. So goodbye. <laughs> but these are. So I'm partnering with Home Pop to show you guys these beautiful bar stools. I've wanted two bar stools for probably six years. Our last house, our island, was too close to the cabinets behind it to warrant having a backrest on our bar stools. They needed to just tuck underneath the counter and be out of sight, out of mind. But here we have the space and a really beautiful bar stool elevates the look of a kitchen very, very quickly for a affordable budget. Save the coffee. These are so easy to assemble. It makes me happy. I didn't even have to change out of my nice clothes to assemble these. Simple 15 minute assembly is probably all it took. 15 minutes. And Beautiful new chairs. Aren't they gorgeous? So I chose the Home Pop open back counter stool walnut legs to match my walnut cabinets. That was very important to me. I do enjoy mismatching wood tones, as you can see from my island and my floor, but more than two in one room, more than two wood tones is a no-go for me. So I wanted something dark to match our island and then this beautiful woven gray seat, which is the perfect 24 inch height for a counter stool. So good. Now when you're looking down the island, you actually see the chairs, which makes a big difference from a design standpoint. And not to mention, it's way more comfortable to have a back, to have this really soft cushiony seat, to be able to relax, chill, actually be at the counter for a while. This is actually where we're eating all of our meals right now because our dining room is under construction. And so having something that you can lean back in and just relax in makes a huge difference. As you can see, having the chair backs be above the countertop really changes the entire look of the entire kitchen the entire time. Make sure and check out the Home Pop counter stools as well as all the other beautiful pieces of furniture that Home Pop offers. I'm gonna link these for you in the description. Now let's talk about other decor in the space because 
Counter stools are a piece of furniture. So it makes sense that we would kind of focus on those because they're a large element of the kitchen. But when you think about decorating a kitchen, most of the time it's going to be small pieces. Now just within this small kind of triangle area here between the sink and the stove, there's a lot of different things that are actually just really functional that serve as decor at the same time. So a beautiful piece of stone that kind of corrals and creates a landing spot for simple things like dish brushes and hand soap. That's a beautiful way to decorate that's also functional. Similarly, over here, I have the same kind of things where decant your oils, make them pretty. Put your knives in a knife block, make them pretty. Put your onions in a basket, ooh, make it pretty. Pop a plant in, makes it pretty. I think you're getting the picture. Anything that just is a little bit of an accent but really isn't taking up a lot of space or making it cluttered, if you have the room for it, makes it pretty. You get the theme. Now I like to call this my workhorse. So I have a marble slab. It's actually a cheese board, but I just use it to create a landing zone for all the functional things. Spoon rest, phone holder, my salts, all of my utensils. Gathered together into something pretty makes it look like decor, but it's also really functional. This is also a great way to do it if you don't have a lot of storage space, like an entire drawer for all of these utensils. Put them on the counter in a pretty crock and make them aesthetically pleasing. So I only put my wood ones, my gold ones, and my black ones out here because they just kind of look nice together. But I also have a lot of ugly ones, right? Everybody's got ugly utensils, you know, like the lime green basting brush and my bright red scissors, those get tucked away. But the things that I use every day that are nice and aesthetically pleasing, I pop out on the counter. Now back here, this is a really great example of where you can completely change the look of your kitchen based on how you decorate it. If you have floating shelves, this is a really great opportunity for you to either create a decorated space like I have because I don't need them for storage or create functional storage. Put your plates, your cups, your bowls up here, put some pretty serving dishes and make it functional decoration. If I were to put plates and bowls and cups up there, it would totally change that look of the corner. And drop it in the comments if you're interested in seeing me style the kitchen a few different ways to kind of drive home the point of what I'm trying to say, where you can take one basic shell of the kitchen and make it look multiple different ways based on your styling. Now let's get back into design. Now, if we're gonna talk about budget and we're gonna talk about kitchen design, then you have to talk about layout because layout is going to impact your budget more than anything else. The layout of this kitchen was completely created from scratch. We completely removed everything that was in the space, including walls. We reworked all of our plumbing. We had to do all new electrical and we rebuilt walls. The sink, all the plumbing had to be routed here and included a lot of HVAC updates as well. Those are extremely expensive elements of a kitchen layout design budget. A budget killer, if you wanna call it that. Now for us, we knew going in that we were gonna completely reconfigure the space that we had planned for it. But if you're in the planning stages, make sure that you take into consideration plumbing, HVAC, and electrical when you're looking at your layout. One element of the design that I had to work around was plumbing. I would have designed this kitchen completely differently if not for one drain pipe. Now what you see right now is a really beautiful focal point of the kitchen with this design of the range hood and the backsplash with flanking windows. None of that was in my dreams. I wanted a complete wall of windows over here and we didn't know what we were gonna get into when we started removing drywall, when we started taking down the walls. And what we ended up coming across, which killed all of my design dreams, was a drain pipe that lives right here from the upstairs to the basement. Now, if you wanna talk about a budget killer, we would have had to remove this drain pipe, reroute it, which would have affected everything upstairs and would have affected everything downstairs, not just in this floor. And so that was way out of budget for us. And so I had to completely redo my entire dream kitchen so that we could accommodate no windows in this section and the 
deep in the drain pipe where it is. And it was a blessing because I actually really love how the design came out. I really love the placement of the windows and it allowed us to do a lot of things that I would probably not have had the space to do if I designed it previously with a wall of windows and the stove not in this location. So my biggest piece of advice for when you're designing a kitchen from scratch, if you have the opportunity to change the layout and if it's necessary, make sure you know where your plumbing, HVAC and electrical is. Make sure that you've talked to a contractor who can tell you if it's possible to move things because it's not always possible. And make sure that you play with the layout in a design program prior to doing anything. I use Planner 5D. It's a really affordable option if you do the paid plan. There's also a free plan, but you can use lots of different programs that are pretty user friendly for anybody who has no design experience just to plug and play your measurements, pop your pieces of furniture around the room, place cabinets in different locations, put your appliances on one end versus the other. And it gives you a really good idea of the flow of the space and how it's gonna look in real life instead of just trying to picture it in your head and hoping it's gonna turn out okay. Another layout consideration is the flow of the space. If you don't have a large kitchen, this will be especially important because small kitchens need good workflow because it's already a crowded space. So if you're looking at layout, plan your hallways or the spaces between cabinets if you have a island that's central very, very meticulously because you want to have good spacing if you have the room and not everybody has the room and that's okay. You can make do with what you have, but if you have the room, give yourself some generous walkway space, whether it's between the perimeter and your island, or if it's like on this side where it's going to be coming down an entire hallway and it's going out. Make sure you have good flow in front of your refrigerator, in front of your stove and in front of your dishwasher, because those are all choke points because they open. In my opinion, the stove is your biggest concern as far as a choke point goes because of the safety issues. Obviously, I have a really generous hallway here. I'm gonna measure it for you. I think it's like 54 inches, but it's been a while since I designed it. 52 inches. That's generous. You don't need to go that big, but I had the space and so I did, and I'm so, so happy that I did because we're always in here in this little corridor on top of each other and we only have a family of four. We're not even a big family. And so having a generous walkway is really important. But most important to me is that I have the space to open my oven without people bumping me into it and then me landing and burning myself. So when you're playing with dimensions, with layout, give yourself generous room around your stove specifically and around your refrigerator because let's face it, that's where everybody is. Everybody's in and out of the refrigerator all day long. And if you don't have good walkways around a refrigerator, then you're going to constantly be bumping into each other or we're gonna have a fridge open and everybody's just gonna be waiting. Standing there waiting for you to shut the fridge and move out of the way. So keep those in mind. Now let's talk about and sink in the kitchen island. For some reason, this is an extremely heated debate. When I was designing my kitchen and I mentioned, not thinking that it would be a big deal, that I was gonna do a sink in the island, I had so many people who were extremely concerned for my well-being. <laughs> I don't really get it. My original intent was to have the sink underneath the window, looking out this beautiful view, but as you just heard, the drain pipe squashed that dream. And so instead we moved it to the kitchen island and I've actually really loved it. It's looking out over our living spaces so that when I am doing dishes, when I'm cooking, when I'm washing my hands, when I'm doing anything at the sink, I can see what's going on and my back isn't to everybody behind me. Now, is there something to be said for a sink looking out of a window on the perimeter of a kitchen. Absolutely. That's how I designed my last kitchen. I loved it. It was one of my favorite elements of the kitchen design because I could peacefully just do dishes and look out and gaze onto my property. And it was wonderful, but this is sometimes just a necessary layout decision and it's works. It works great guys. Don't be afraid to do something that everybody tells you you're not going to like. Sometimes you don't have a choice as I didn't really in this situation. And sometimes it's just the best design decision. So now we have talked about cabinets. 
big budget. We've talked about layout, big budget decisions. We've talked about decorating, small budget decisions that make a big impact. But we haven't talked about the third big budget decision, countertops. Now countertops are where I would love for you to have an open mind when it comes to design and when it comes to budget. Because let me tell you, there are some butcher block countertops that are more expensive than quartz. And there are some marble countertops that are less expensive than quartz. And there are some quartzites and some granites that are more expensive or less expensive than your high-end marbles. You have a very large amount of opportunities to play with budget, play with design, and play with material when it comes to countertops. Most people have it in their mind that marble is the end all be all of a kitchen countertop design. They think it's the most high end look you can find and that it's also the most expensive, but that's not actually true. There are plenty of marbles that are more affordable range, some even cheaper than high end quartzes. And there's also lots of marbles that are the most expensive top of the line. It just depends on which type of marble you're selecting. Conversely, a lot of people look at granites and they can only imagine the 90s Venetian gold granite. We had that in our kitchen two houses ago and I picked it and I regretted it as soon as I picked it, but it was in our budget. And I just, at that time, didn't have the experience or the knowledge to know the opportunities I had to bring something in for the same budget as that lower end granite and have it look high-end design. So if you are looking at different countertop options, I'm going to actually link for you in the description a ton of blog posts where I break down all of the different options. We're talking quartz, quartzite, soapstone, granite, marble, the pros and cons to all of those stones, whether they're man-made like quartz or natural like granite or quartzite or marble or soapstone. And I would really encourage you to just Look at all of your options before you make a decision. And the most important thing that you can do when picking out a countertop is to go into your local stone yard. Go walk and look at very large, full-size, 10-foot slabs rather than the little samples that they have in a showroom because that is going to show you exactly what you're getting. You'll even be able to pick the stone that you want if you go that route. Alternatively, look at your butcher block options, look at your laminate options, look at your Caesar stone options. There's a lot of different opportunities to create the look for less, and there's also a lot of different opportunities to get a high-end look for less, or to blow your budget completely and go top of the line. Don't count something out until you've looked into what it will actually cost for your kitchen, for your layout in your area because different materials will cost more in different parts of the country and for your installation costs as well. Quotes are your best friend. Have an open mind. You might fall in love with something that you didn't expect once you get into the stone yard. Now let's talk about hardware. Hardware is probably the easiest way to totally change the look of your kitchen on a budget or not on a budget because some hardware is really expensive. But if you're looking to update your kitchen without removing any cabinets, without painting, without doing anything to a backsplash or anything to a countertop, change out your hardware. Now, cabinet hardware can be placed different ways to come up with a different look. I've done a very traditional look centered on my rails, and I also use knobs for my cabinet doors and pulls for my drawer fronts utilizing different size pulls for different size drawers, which I think really elevates it and makes it look more custom, even though all you're doing is buying a different size. So I've got a six inch for my smaller drawers, I've got a 12 inch for my 36 inch drawers. I have a couple of eight inch options down on the pantry. So just alternating your sizing can go a long way in elevating the look of a kitchen and making it look more custom. Also using knobs and pulls in combination, also elevates it for a more custom look rather than using all the exact same hardware on everything. Everything I'm showing you, I'm going to link in the description. So if you're curious about where I got my cabinet hardware from or what kind of countertops we have or, you know, our sink, things like that, it's all in the description. Now let's talk about a really big design element, backsplashes. Do you see how this one just glistens in the sun? It's my favorite thing about it. 
I had this exact same backsplash at my last home. I designed it again using it in this kitchen because I loved it so much. I love the variation of color. It just elevates it from a basic subway tile to something that looks much more custom, handmade, has the wavy appearance, catches that sun and makes it glisten. It's really beautiful. I love it a lot. I've used it twice. Now a backsplash can go a long way in changing the look of a kitchen once again. This backsplash is very classic. It's pretty traditional, but it could be modernized very easily by flipping it and installing it vertically instead of this, the brick stack that I did. And it was also a more expensive mid-range option for backsplash. If you're looking for a much more affordable option and you just wanna update your backsplash really easily, Simple subway tile is really affordable. Even something like beadboard panels, extremely affordable option that will totally transform the way your kitchen looks. There are a lot of options for backsplashes anymore. It doesn't have to just be tile. Think into wood accents. Stone is really a beautiful backsplash option, though it is on the upper end of the budget. And in my opinion, would be very hard to clean. These are the types of things that I just can't get past sometimes. I look at a beautiful stone backsplash and I'm just like, oh, look at that rock. It's gorgeous. And then I think to myself, I would hate cleaning that. And so I would never put it into a kitchen. But that's just my opinion. Some people, they're like, yep, I'm going to scrub this and I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. And neither is wrong. So consider much more than just tile when you're thinking of a backsplash option, especially if you want something that's more budget friendly. Now the sun comes out. I've been filming in the utter darkness this entire time. And now the sun is like, I'm going to make an appearance. Thank you, sun. This is another example of a backsplash option. I did a really beautiful V groove paneling. This is walnut to match the rest of my cabinetry as well as the shelves. Think about how this would look in an entire kitchen. That would create a completely different look, a lot more moody, a lot more polished and like high end, but also could be a little bit more masculine. And so things like wood options as a backsplash are a great opportunity for high end design at the same time as potentially, depending on the wood, depending on what style you use, a more affordable option than tile. Now let's talk cabinet style. There are a lot of different styles of cabinetry. Shaker is your most well-known look right now in this modern day. And a shaker door is literally this with this inset panel and then your rails around it without this extra piece of applied molding. That is a basic shaker style door. That's what I had in my last house. In this house, I decided to take a shaker style elevate it with the extra applied molding that goes around the perimeter. And then on the drawer fronts, rather than taking that and bringing it into all of my very large amounts of drawers, I did what's called slab front, flat front, slab front. All it means is that it's one solid piece of wood with no molding, no paneling at all. Now I did this for a couple of reasons. Number one, these slab front drawers are extremely easy to clean so much better than shaker style drawers. All you do is wipe them down. You don't have to get into any of these corners and grooves or lips. And that makes it much easier just to keep them looking polished and cleaned up. The other reason I chose to combine an applied molding shaker style door with flat slab front drawers is because I have a very long bank. And if I were to have applied the shaker style molding here with the applied molding, it'd be a lot of detail. And I think it would have been a little bit overwhelming for the space. I'm already dealing with all of the lines from having a full overlay door. And I didn't want to add a bunch more lines that would kind of make your eye like do this as it goes down the bank of cabinets. On the other hand, since I did a full hutch style look here for a more furniture built-in look, I did do the applied molding on just a few of the drawers on the hutch and on the island in the walnut to break it up a little bit. I didn't want this to become monotonous if it went all the way down. And I like the combination. So don't be afraid to change up your style of cabinetry, especially if you're doing a stained versus a painted look. It's a great way to break it up and make it look unique and like a one of a kind piece. Now when talking budget, we've already covered layout, biggest budget killer. We've also covered cabinetry, we've covered countertops, and I wanna cover appliances. Appliances can be affordable, they can be kind of affordable, and then they can be 
unbelievable. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I would ever have to pay that for a fridge. And so we kind of went with the affordable into uh, kind of affordable range with our kitchen appliances. A lot of people would prefer to do a panel ready fridge. We talked about this in my kitchen organization video, which I'll pop up here for you if you want to see how I've organized everything. I made the choice not to customize my cabinets with the cabinet maker. Instead, I customize them myself for organizational purposes with aftermarket items, and I have a whole video for you right here if you're interested. But in that video, I alluded to why I don't have a panel-ready fridge. And it's really simple. Panel-ready fridges are more expensive, usually have less storage space because they're counter depth, and are very difficult to replace if they break down the road without having to redo the paneling. And you probably won't be able to find the exact same size that you need to fit into the shell that you've created with your boxes. Now, is that me saying that they're not beautiful or that they can't be functional or that you shouldn't do them? Not at all. If you want a panel ready fridge or dishwasher or ice machine or wine cooler, you can pretty much panel almost anything these days. Just look into the pros and cons. I have an entire article on it on my blog, which I will link for you in the description if you wanna dive deeper into that specific topic. I also just went with your basic 30 inch stove. Quite a few people asked why I didn't go wider to a 36 or a 48. And I did look into a larger option. I looked into the 36 inch option, but what I was finding is that while the burner space was larger in those, the oven space was actually really small to the point where for some reason I would be barely able to fit a turkey in there with the distance it had as far as height goes. And so I was a little surprised by that. And when I say that, I'm talking about the 36 inch stoves that were in my budget. I'm sure that if you have the high end, top of the line, large stoves, they probably had more space, but the ones I could afford, they were a no go. So I stuck with my 30 inch, it works just fine. Now, while I'm here, let's talk about lighting. Besides hardware on your cabinets, lighting is the other piece of jewelry for your kitchen. You can go super high end, super expensive. I'm talking $2,000 for one light fixture, or you can go really affordable. I think these sconces were like $60, but I think they still look really high end. I love that about lighting. You can get a really high end look on a budget pretty easily. Lighting is one of the most saturated markets in the home design interior design industry and so you have a lot of options to choose from now i want to show you what it would look like to change the feel of the kitchen by swapping out this lighting i'm going to throw up a couple of mock-ups of different sconce options and show you what it could be. You can do a wicker shade and have it look a lot more homey. You could do an industrial style sconce and it could either look industrial style or more masculine or more farmhousey, all depending on the style fixture that you choose. Same goes for your ceiling lights. Whether you have space for a beautiful large chandelier or you're doing small pendants or you're doing flush mounts, the opportunity to change the look of your kitchen with lighting is endless. With overhead lighting, what you really need to consider is your ceiling height. So we have a less than eight foot tall ceiling in this kitchen, which makes pendant lighting, especially over an island where you're conversing and you're reaching and you're doing things like this, it makes it difficult to find something that's gonna look correct without it looking too tiny or too large or too far down so that it's in your eye level. I'm a pretty tall person. I'm 5'8", my husband's 6'2", and so, you know, consider him like up here, right? Like this. Look where his head height would be. Be right in line with this globe. And that was one of my biggest challenges was designing this kitchen for tall people with short ceilings. Eight or nine foot ceilings are pretty average in American households these days. And so that is definitely something to take into consideration. Originally, I had purchased a very large circular shape shade. And when we hung it, no matter how high I brought it to the ceiling, it just looked awkward. And so we pared it down. I found these very last minute, like we're talking, they arrived the day the electricians came to install them. <laughs> And I love them. I do love how they look in the kitchen. I could soften the entire kitchen 
by taking these down and doing some kind of wicker shade. That would completely change the look of this kitchen with one swap. And if you see this hole right there in my ceiling, in my brand new kitchen, I was originally planning to do one single linear pendant slash chandelier because of that ceiling height issue. But what I hadn't taken into consideration when I did that design was the height of my faucet, which is motion activated. But when I originally held it up, it came down to like right here. And then there was only a 12 inch gap between that and my faucet. And so it just looked really awkward. And thankfully the electricians were able to pull wires to do pendants on either side of the sink. So just a quick summary, if you are planning a kitchen remodel, or if you're even just planning to update it slightly with maybe new hardware or new lights or new countertop, all of which would completely change the look of your kitchen very easily without having to touch your cabinets, then make sure you keep in mind the big elements that are gonna be budget killers or budget savers. We talked about layout, we talked about spacing, we talked about cabinet design, whether you're going with a prefab or a semi-custom or a custom. We talked about the way that your doors looked. Are they gonna be a partial overlay, full overlay, inset? Are you gonna have slab front drawers? Are you gonna have applied molding with a shaker cabinet? Or are you gonna have a completely different style cabinet door because those are not the only options. Are you gonna do laminate? Are you gonna do butcher block? How about quartzite? Maybe a cheaper marble. What kind of countertops are you gonna put? Followed by, what does your backsplash look like? Are you gonna do a really basic subway tile? Maybe you're gonna do an applied molding of some kind that you create yourself. That's also an option. Think outside the box, especially when it comes to backsplash. You want a super affordable way to update your entire kitchen? Change out the hardware, change out the lighting, call it good. If you don't wanna rip anything out, but you wanna completely change the look of your kitchen, do something with the cabinets, paint them, stain them. Those are pretty much your only options and you will totally transform the way your kitchen looks. I have painted multiple kitchens. I have full tutorials on my blog if you want to paint your kitchen cabinets and those are in the description. And then lastly, how are you decorating your space? Are you doing it very minimalistically? Do you want to cozy it up a little bit? Add some softer elements, add some plants, make your functional items like soap and scrub brushes look pretty and display them on a counter. There's lots of different ways that you can decorate a kitchen without having to spend a ton of money to transform the look. Counter stools, bar stools, those are a fantastic option because they're so high impact being a larger furniture piece. Make sure and check out my home pop counter stools linked in the description and you'll find lots of other beautiful affordable options as well. And if you want to spend absolutely no money whatsoever, just go pick some flowers from your yard. Pretty every time. Now, even though this video I feel like was on the longer end, I hope that it was helpful just to think through a lot of the different options when you're designing a kitchen. Obviously, we created a custom kitchen that was part of our budget, that was part of our plan. Obviously, that also won't work for everybody. So. Think about those things if you're looking to update your kitchen, but your budget is on the lower end that you can swap out really easily without touching layout or cabinetry. Now, if you have watched this far, then you're waiting for me to tell you how much this kitchen costs. I'm sorry to disappoint. There's just no way that I can really separate out exactly what this kitchen costs because we didn't just do a kitchen. We completely took down a wall. We redid the entire bathroom laundry room on the first floor. We redid all the flooring in the entire main level. We did other things like windows. We did all kinds of insulation updates and structural work that we had run into when we had our ceiling torn out. There was just way, way more that went into our remodel than your average kitchen remodel. So what I would encourage you to do is go start getting your quotes for cabinetry, countertops, floors, and contractors. If you're doing floors. We didn't even talk about floors. Maybe next time. Get at least three quotes from three different sources for every single material source that you're looking at so you can compare prices and know that what I pay here in Michigan is not gonna be what you pay in California or in Canada or in Maine. Geography plays a huge role in the cost of materials and labor. So just make sure that you are aware of that going in. And if you are in Michigan, I loved working with Lakeside Surfaces. I've done four projects with them for my countertops. 
over the years. And so I will link for you a free quote button in my description if you wanna grab your own free quote for countertops from them. They have all kinds of sources beyond just quartz, so make sure to check them out. I hope this was helpful to walk through a lot of these design decisions. If I didn't cover something that you were curious about, drop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. And I'll see you next time.